On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including Perseverance finds organic matter in a Martian river delta, Blue Origin's rocket explodes, making Congress nervous, and NASA preps to regain control of the tumbling capstone lunar satellite. There's lots to go over this week, so let's get going. This is The Space Race. The Perseverance Mars rover has discovered what NASA reports is the largest concentration of organic matter yet found on its multi-year survey mission of the Jezero Crater. In a press release on September 15th, NASA said that the find was made in a section of the crater believed to be an ancient river delta, a one meter wide rock formation the team is calling Wildcat Ridge. Four samples in total have been drilled out of the nearby rocks, and the rover's findings have confirmed NASA's suspicions that this delta would harbor organic matter and possible signs of ancient life. Perseverance used its scanning habitable environments with Raman and Luminescence for Organics and Chemicals, or Sherlock, device to assess the samples. Mounted on the rover's arm, Sherlock analyzes samples using spectrometers, cameras, and a laser. And the samples from Wildcat Ridge were full of organic compounds and sulfuric minerals called sulfates. It's important to note that with only the tools that the rover has on board, NASA can't be sure these organic compounds are the footprint of life existing in Mars's prehistory. Organic compounds can form as part of geological activity, and while they can definitely result in living organisms, we just can't say for sure that these samples contain biosignatures. And from what Perseverance has seen on the rest of Jezero Crater, there's been plenty of geological activity. One of the first locations the rover explored after landing in 2021 was a location named Seta, after the Navajo word for amidst the sand. The rocks there seem to be igneous rocks formed by magma, but even better, these rocks showed signs of rapid cooling, possibly even the presence of water. This more or less confirms NASA's belief that Jezero Crater was likely formed by an asteroid impact and then flooded over time to create a lake sometime around three and a half billion years ago. Unfortunately, the rocks at Seta were not giving much in the way of organic markers, so Perseverance began making its way to the delta, taking samples along the way. Wildcat Ridge was chosen as a target for Perseverance, mainly due to its position in the river delta. Deltas are where a lot of sediment ends up being deposited as water runs from smaller rivers into wider lakes, meaning any geological formations here had a much better chance of being the type of muddy, sedimentary rock that usually holds fossils and other organic matter here on Earth. More specifically though, the location surrounding the ridge, the delta front, is a 40 meter high cliffside where the sediment deposits are visibly layered. NASA describes the area as a cross section allowing easy access to an array of time periods written in the rock. And Perseverance isn't stopping at Wildcat Ridge. The original plan was to take the rover further up the delta, and with the new findings, NASA is going to hold to that plan. For the next year or so, NASA's robot surveyor will gather a collection of samples up and down the ancient river mouth. The team is hoping to gain a robust array of different cores, not just to test for biological evidence, but everything they can do to get a clearer picture of early Mars. But NASA can't do that with the tools onboard Perseverance. They just aren't powerful or specific enough. They'll need to get the samples back home, sealed and safe from contamination, which is another reason Perseverance has had such a wandering path. For every sample taken, the rover takes a second identical sample to leave in caches along its route. This way, if Perseverance isn't able to hand off its samples to the ESA's Earth Return Orbiter when it reaches Mars in 2031, then the Ingenuity-style helicopter fetch drones attached to the lander can fly to these sample depots for the backups. The Moon to Mars exploration approach is NASA's procedure to sharpen their skills for a new age of exploration in our wider solar system. Perseverance is doing as much as it can, covering as many fields of study as possible, because it is important to this new age of NASA exploration. 
NASA's new moon to Mars approach, which includes Artemis, is intended to prepare us for human exploration and habitation of these two bodies and possibly more. It's definitely exciting that Perseverance found a treasure trove of organic material, but what's more exciting is that this rover is working. It's doing what it was designed to do just about perfectly. That's not just good news for NASA, that's good news for all of us. Though especially NASA, they could definitely use a win right now. Also, just wanted to let you know about our Discord server. We've got over 1,500 members and host regular live watch parties within the community. We have some big events coming up for the first Starship launch, Artemis launch, and Tesla AI day. So if you aren't already, join our Discord server using the link in the description. On the other hand, we have some bad news for Jeff Bezos and his space company Blue Origin coming from Texas last week as an uncrewed New Shepard booster failed explosively about a minute after takeoff. On approach to supersonic speeds at over 600 miles per hour, the hydrogen-powered BE-3 engine started showing some unusual behavior with the exhaust plume changing color and shape. The team knew something was very wrong when the power plant of the rocket shut down a moment later, and the rocket began to tilt off its axis. Luckily, the abort motor on the reusable capsule fired up automatically and pushed it clear of the booster to save the vehicle and its payload of scientific experiments from going down in a fiery explosion. When you see video from inside the New Shepard capsule, there's that round thing in the middle that almost looks like a table. That's the top of the abort motor. The Federal Aviation Administration, the governmental body that oversees licensing and investigations of rocket mishaps, immediately jumped into action. The FAA quickly confirmed that the capsule touched down safely inside the hazard zone, and that while no one was injured, the New Shepard would be grounded until the cause of the anomaly was discovered. For their part, Blue Origin and their supporters were quick to point out that the launch abort systems operated perfectly and would have saved lives if the capsule had been crewed, but that alone doesn't really put the FAA or Congress at ease. In a letter to the FAA on September 15th, Representatives Don Beyer and Brian Babin highlighted their concern in this particular instance, as New Shepard is a crew-rated vehicle and has carried humans in the past. They wrote that, On a different day with a different mission, this vehicle's anomaly could have put human lives in danger. And that's not an overcautious statement. The overwhelming consensus of the spaceflight industry is that safety cannot be taken lightly. More rockets that fail and or explode do so in their development cycle, when they're at their least risk to the lives of crew and technicians. Having an operational vehicle which has flown 31 people to date suddenly failing explosively like this is bound to loosen confidence. The abort system working isn't exactly comforting either. It is designed to save lives and would have in this case but anyone riding inside would have definitely been injured. New Shepard's abort system is powered by a solid fuel booster, which delivers a staggering and immediate 70,000 pounds of thrust. That's over 11 Gs of force on anyone inside. For reference, trained pilots wearing pressure suits can take about 8 or 9 Gs at max. At 10 or 11 Gs, there's risk of bone fractures and other internal injuries. So... Not dead, but definitely not fine either. It's an interesting thought experiment to put yourself in the mind of what a New Shepard passenger might have felt if they were inside that capsule. You're a rich person or celebrity, just riding your buddy Jeff's flaming dildo rocket into space for a bit of fun. Then you feel a change in the sound and vibration coming from the rocket booster underneath your feet. Then the ship starts to veer off course and suddenly you're not going straight up anymore and then there is a thunder as the abort motor directly behind your back kicks on, and you don't have enough time to reconcile with the probability that you're about to die in a giant metal dick owned by a little bald dick before an unfathomable amount of force hits your body like a brick wall. You likely pass out at this point. The unlucky among the crew will wake up screaming moments later on realization that they are still in a metal box, now free-falling back to the earth, with absolutely no idea what just happened or what's going to happen next, along with possibly a few broken bones. I wonder if you get your $100 million back after that. 
It's too early yet for the FAA or Blue Origin to know exactly what caused the problem. New Shepard is a reusable system, and this particular booster was on its ninth launch, so maybe the problem lies there. Regardless, it's going to take some time and some engineering hours to get New Shepard up and running again. Until then, we can all just be happy there weren't people in there. NASA's Capstone Scout satellite is tumbling through space on its way to the moon, and NASA isn't sure they can stop it yet. On September 8th, the microwave-sized satellite was scheduled for a course correction to adjust for the eventual insertion into the planned near-rectilinear halo orbit around the moon, the precise and sustainable orbit that the Capstone mission designed for. But at the tail end of the maneuver, something went wrong. Luckily, the satellite was still on course, but now it was tumbling uncontrollably. Capstone is equipped with reaction wheels, devices that spin to help control a vehicle's orientation in zero-g. But the tumble is so severe that the wheels weren't helping. And worse still, Advanced Space, the company running the mission, didn't know for more than 24 hours. Capstone is on a super-efficient course to the moon, but it's one that takes it into deep space for a little bit. Being out that far, communication is already a little spotty, and adding a tumble to that meant that the communications went down. The only reason Advanced Space knew anything was wrong after the burn was that the satellite hadn't checked back in. Luckily, Capstone was built to make use of NASA's deep space network. Using the satellite's low-gain antennas is the only form of communication the ground team has right now, and the news is not great. Capstone's attempts to stop the tumble on its own haven't been successful, but they've also used up a lot of power. The main computer was also having issues, resetting over and over. The ground team popped it into safe mode, but between the reaction wheels, the computer resets, and the tumble keeping Capstone's solar panels out of the sun, the satellite does not have a lot of juice left. Luckily, Advanced Space's team has performed a detumble mission with Capstone before, in July, after separating from the rocket lab provided upper stage, the team did a small detumble maneuver successfully. So, for now, the ground team is preparing to perform this maneuver and get Capstone's solar panels reoriented properly. Advanced Space said that they're going to work to improve the thermal situation of several subsystems and reevaluate the satellite's capabilities before making the attempt. Capstone is the first vehicle to ever attempt this sort of orbital insertion around the moon, and its success is pivotal to future Artemis missions that plan on using the same path. If Advanced Space can't get Capstone into position for its capture burn in November, NASA's Gateway Project might have to move ahead without their scout. Fingers crossed for Capstone. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.